Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Bob, seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. Oh, Bob, I'm Father Dave. What's wrong? You look so distraught this morning. <laughs> so my beautiful wife, who's wonderful. Wh- whom we love. Absolutely. Wh- whom we love. She who love must her. be loved. Um, I Yesterday I got back from my... Uh, a diaconal formation. So I, I, I took my car out of the guitar, my, my guitar out of the car, and I just put it by the side of the car. Now in my, I forgot I left it there, but I just parked the car in the garage, right? But it's just a second. Well, that's the moment that my wife comes into the driveway. Now she says she didn't see it, and I have no well, reason I think to. That's probably that's yeah. Not I think believe that's probably her because fair. if she had seen it, I don't think she would have intentionally. Driven, driven, she destroyed it. This is what happened. She just, now she has a tendency of like kind of speeding right into uh, our driveway, not unlike Batman into the Bat Cave. But uh, sure enough, she rolled over it. It was in a soft case. Interestingly enough, the soft case survived, but the guitar is uh, unplayable. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I saw in many different well, I pieces. Some, I love that guitar. I've been playing that guitar for. I mean, that's that's like you know, like ten years ago, I had a number of guitars, and I was like, I don't need a number of guitars. I have my one guitar that I love, and what could possibly happen to it? My wife, my beautiful wife, yeah. whom I love. Uh, okay, so um, I saw some pictures of it, and you're right. That <laughs> bad boy's never <laughs> never going to be played again. Okay. Okay, so you know, it was funny. John, I saw John Paul later that day, and John Paul was like, w- w- "Did you throw it away? I can fix it." I'm like, "You can't fix it." He's like, "No, no, I can in, fix it." He's like, "Where is it?" I'm like, "It's, it's in a hundred. It's, it's in my garbage in outside, pieces. you know, in my house." So sure enough, I came home and the garbage can was open and the guitar was gone. I think he's gonna try to put it together. It's not like there's a crack on this thing. I mean, this thing is splintered. No, I mean, this thing is just it, it's, shattered. Well, that's, it was interesting because a couple of people said, you know, I know somebody who, who's good at fixing, which is great. I mean, A, John Paul, he's a great musician. Uh, give him a shot, maybe you can figure it out. Can I just say a, a couple of things went wrong in this one. Obviously, the guitar being rolled over, <laughs> it being left out, um, the sentimental value it has. I mean, that's just, that's, that's, that's all around, all around, that's just a bad day. Sorry about that. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah, yeah but tell yeah. me about your day. Now you are you are coming to us from an undisclosed location, so we should do the I "Where am, in the World Is Father Dave Pavanka?" Give us, uh, right, give right. me a hint. Okay, I'm I'm going to start off with most general, and then help you focus a little bit. Catholic. Thank you. So you still don't know? Yeah, you you need to be St. Louis. No. Okay, first Catholic. (laughs) Still don't know? Baltimore. Okay, first Catholic president. Um, Well, wouldn't that have been JFK? Yes, yes. So Massachusetts? No, first Catholic president assassination. Oh, this is good. Dallas. Yes. How did yes. we start with see, um, Catholic with Dallas? Can you explain that a little bit to me? <laughs> well, I, was just, I, did, I, I didn't want you to just jump there. I wanted you to have to work for it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's what you go with. There you go. The first Catholic president yeah, being started. assassinated. That's, that's, that's the start. Not cowboys. Well, I start. Not um, oh yeah oh don't who's be the ridiculous. baseball team in Dallas? Do they have a baseball team? For goodness sakes, Bob! I won't even. I'm so silly. That question. Um, okay, first off, I always start with. I really am curious. Do they not have a baseball team? No, yeah, they, they have a baseball team. The Rangers. But um, uh, I won't even. Oh, I thought that was Houston. Okay. No, that's the Astros. Um, I won't even entertain that question because I'm not a Dallas Cowboy fan for that being true. And I always start everything as being Catholic, Bob, because that's what I am. I'm a Catholic. Amen. 
Yeah. Amen. So every time I'm going to ask you, where are you? The first clue is always going to be Catholic. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Maybe (laughs) maybe I'll work on that. Really narrow it down. We'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe maybe we could just assume that you're Catholic and move on to the location. Right. Uh, Okay. Okay. So uh, speaking of baseball. (laughs) Yeah. um, There are some people that are unhappy that we have not given baseball its due. Um, one person wrote that said, if I don't, there's an equal and greater Reds, amount of people who are happy. Yeah. Somebody wrote me and said that if I don't give the Boston Red Sox their due, they're never going to listen again, which is a little over the top if you ask me. Um, but they did do something that had not, I don't think it had ever been done. They hit a grand slam home run in the first inning and another grand slam home run in the second inning. So the Red Sox are playing the Astros. I don't, I don't like either one of those teams, but I really don't like the Astros, so I think I'm going to have to root for the Red Sox. And then the other is the Dodgers against the Braves, and I don't like either one of those teams. So I'm just, Bob, I don't know what I'm going to do. I do not know what I'm going to do right now. I don't, I'm so conflicted. I'm, yeah, I'm more conflicted about this baseball playoff season than you probably are about your guitar. So that's where I stand right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that could be true. Is is the Tampa Bay Rays <laughs> still in it? What happened to them? No, no, no. They lost. It was the Red Sox. They kind of took them out. Yep. Oh, well, that's horrible. You, I'm sorry to hear that. You win some, you win some, you lose some, Bob. Yep. I, I, guess, I guess that's how it goes. Well, this might be a good time to do our Franciscan plug of the day. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, opening up. It's been a little bit of a comedy of errors this morning for all of you listening. <laughs> that's that's an understatement. Um, here it is. All right. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and share with you our school theme for this academic year. It's plastered all over campus on posters. Wait, we've done this before. It is. Have we? It's not to say you can't do it again. Yeah, we did because I made the Yoda joke about it. Oh, oh that's right. That's but if it was funny the first time, it's hysterical the second time. Yes. Yes, it is. So I wanted to take a moment to share with everybody our school theme. And I think we've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating. Um, it's plastered all over campus on posters. Of course it is. Of course it is. We, we promote things well. It's from Psalm 127, verse 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build. I tell the students, the psalmist is reminding us to invite the Lord to all we do. For students, this means inviting them in. Oh, you know what? You're supposed to be saying this. (laughs) I guess you tell the students, the psalmist is reminding us. Well, given I don't have it in front of me, I you know when you it says Father Dave in big capital letters and a colon. Thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll be I'll be you. Thank you. All right, let me. I don't. You know, I I don't really do an impression of you though. I don't. You're not very. impressionable. Wow. I'll try my best. On that note. I want to take a moment and share with you our school theme this academic year. Amen? Amen. Amen. (laughs) So anyway, the cool thing about the theme is it reminds us to invite the Lord into all we do. Uh, For students, it means inviting Jesus into the classrooms, clubs, athletic teams, into ministries they undertake. It's a message that we can all take to heart. Our mission each day should be to strive to serve others and work to the best of our abilities while never forgetting the Lord whose work it is we're doing. Hey, I, you know, I just have a question about these scriptural themes that we have each year. And by the way, I think it's awesome that we have them. Um, where do they come from? Is that something you pray about? Is that something you and the friars pray about? Or, you know, where does it come about each year, these scriptural themes? I, I personally really do love, I love this particular theme that we have this year. Uh, all the above. The friars, as well as some of the faculty and staff, we spend actually several weeks just going before the Lord, just praying, discussing, discerning. And then we just try to try to be faithful what the Lord is asking of us. It, it was pretty evident that mm. the Lord has been speaking to us. Uh, the whole, you know, St. Francis, rebuild my church. This sense of working together, trying to create something. And, and ultimately, we're trying to create a Christian community, a Catholic community on campus. And we do that through faith and through academics. And yeah, so that's kind of where that one came about. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, I had a weird experience this weekend, and I'm curious. Well, you must have had this too. So, I got my clerics. Um, well, that's right. I, of course. you know, got the black. I got my. You know, I already had like the black suit, and then the. But I got my black clerical shirt, 
and it was really, really weird when I like put the white collar in because they're doing a, they're taking pictures of us this week. So I think subconsciously I've been avoiding it. Like they've been saying, you should buy clerics. And I was like, yeah, I should. And then I haven't. And then it was when it was, okay, you have to have it by Wednesday. I was like, oh, okay. So I had to like rush ship them uh, from the place to, to get them on time. And I put them on, I looked in the mirror and I was like, who is that? I just feel like I was going to get in trouble. Yeah, like you're dressing like, up. I, I feel like, is this Halloween a little bit early? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so real I sh- quick. My, I came downstairs, my wife stared at me and she was like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> real quick, how, what's the, the policy? So different dioceses deal with clerics differently. So what is the policy in Steubenville Diocese? When, when can you wear clerics? So the, the policy in Steubenville is it's only black. So I know some dioceses like have deacons wear like gray or other colors, but mm-hmm. uh, in Steubenville, it's just black. And you can wear it when you are doing a specific and intentional diaconal ministry. Okay. So if I'm leading RCIA, obviously if I'm at mass, but I'm not supposed to be kicking around uh, in public with the clerics. That's the idea behind that. Okay. Okay. And obviously, I mean, my guess is everyone knows this, but deacons are clerics. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing to remind people. So some people, you know, question why. Yeah, it is the sacrament of, it's the sacrament of holy orders. It's the first level Mm -hmm. of the sacrament of holy orders. Uh, So, yes, I am ordained, which is kind of funny because I I always remember uh, Deacon Dominic Serrato, you know, when people complain sometimes about why do deacons wear Roman collars, uh, you know, Deacon Dom will be like, Nobody fusses when a seminarian wears a Roman collar, and they're not even ordained. <laughs> so yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. It is something. Uh, but, but, it is something you know, for deacons. But you're right. Different dioceses have have different policies on it. Right, right. And it was interesting because we, um, the, I, you had said the first time you wear clerics, it was interesting. The first time I put on my habit, you know, your novices, and it was just, it's just weird. There's so much material there, and, and again, you kind of look like you're dressing up. Well, then I wore my habit for right. years before I, I was ordained. So I remember the first time I put on clerics and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so strange. It was really, it was really different. And I, <laughs> you know, we, you know, we could wear our habit. You know, one of the friars obviously on campus, he wears his clerics more than he does his habit. And that's, that's an option that an individual has, but I much prefer my habits. So um, uh, on campus, I'll bet you, you, you probably haven't seen me in clerics Maybe two or three times ever. Is that probably right, Bob? I'm trying to think if I've ever seen you yeah. in clerics. And and just maybe to clarify for some listeners that might not know the language we're talking about. So clerics means it's the white it's the white collar, you know, black shirt or, or something else. And yeah, the, the black shirt, the white collar, right. And you guys right. don't usually wear a collar under your habit, right? That just isn't done. No, right. Rarely. Yeah. Rarely does it happen. I, I actually wear my clerics and I started wearing my clerics more when I'm flying for a couple of reasons, just some strange things that happen in security checks and those kinds of things in my habit and some other <laughs> issues that I won't, I won't get into. Let's just leave it at that. But the other part is, is there's something about, about being identified as a priest. You know, when people see the habit, they're some, you know, Catholics might yeah. be understanding what it is, but so that's about the only time I, I wear clerics. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, under, well, let's not get into what I wear underneath. Let's just say shorts and a t shirt of some type. How about that? There you go. Yeah. It's always fun yeah, to see is... like Friar Night when the Friars go to the movies and just see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't start uh, What's in some of the Friars' closets? Yeah, you're not so, wrong. <laughs> I guess you're right. I'm not wrong. Yeah. My sister always joked that she wanted to make sure, like, if I was going out to a movie with them or something like that. That I would not be, that I wouldn't look like I'm dressed in clothes that are 25 years old. So, but some of my t shirts probably are. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the other thing is that people ask, maybe, like, do we, maybe always... some of them rocked it, rocked a Ted Nugent look. Yeah, that's right. Some people ask if we always have to wear clerics or we always have to wear a habit. And the reality is, is we don't. There's not this, this firm law that has to be like this, but. As you know, the vast majority of the time, I'm in my habit or my clerics. But if I'm just like you and I, we've gone out for dinner or something like that. And sometimes I just have a shirt and yep. pants and jeans, something like that. So, yeah. And it's interesting because some people, I was just, this is really funny. I had, so, I had dinner with somebody last night and, and it was at a restaurant here in town and I was in my habit. Um, but the one of the women that was in the group said that she actually appreciated at times when, when a priest or a friar was just kind of dressed normal, because she says there's a, 
there's a personalness, a humanness of that. And again, it was her opinion. Some people go the, the other way, the, that a priest should never, a deacon should never be anything but that. So there's a difference of opinion on that. Yeah. So when we go to the movies, what are you going to wear? I'm going to wear my uh, Batman suit. I mean, my Spider-Man suit. What are we going to again? <laughs> the Spider-Man movie. I am actually going to go full Doctor Strange just to oh, raise nice. yourself. Oh, nice. You are not. Are you really? Are you going to wear oh, yeah, that totally. little... That cape thing, then, good Lord. I don't know if I'm going to go. That's great. Oh, I got a full That's outfit. Great. I was only wearing the cape that day, but uh, I got like the whole, yeah, you're, you're going to be really proud to sit next to me. That's great. I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, that's great, Bob. Well, I can't <laughs> wait to see you. I can't wait to see you in Clerics the first time. And just, I need to figure out how I'm going to deal with that. So I'll work through it. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. Okay. I'll be the guy holding the broken guitar. Uh, so you'll that you'll be great. I'll be easily recognizable. That's great. Do, <laughs> big, do we have any other announcements, emails, or anything like that? Uh, not that I checked, but as you okay. know, part of our part of our joy today was today was the day that Franciscan decided to change the internet password on everybody. So I have no idea what's going on with my uh, with my life. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because my thing comes in and it says that I have an email, but when I try to get it, it says that I have to redo my password, and then it told me that I don't have the re- require or i don't have whatever it is the level of credentials to be able to get my emails so this is the world i'm living in right now which is great yeah it's like a bit of a mystery i tried to i tried to put my password in and it said something like that password does not live up to the and it gave a long list like length age requirements you know just of what a password should be but there's no information as to what that is so i i just I can't. I shouldn't say what I put in there, but I I put in yeah, a very yeah. long password with the password, with every one, like two, three, special four, sign, five, six, number, yeah. capital, under, right? Exactly, exactly. So anyway, but no, yeah. So I'm not exactly no. sure about emails, but we do have um, a wonderful feast coming up on Friday. We do, we do, and that is uh, John Paul II, which is great. Yeah, which is great. It, it was funny because I I was looking at my calendar and I didn't pick that up, and I said I don't know if there's much going on this week. And, and Bob says, uh, John Paul is on Friday. It's like, yes, of course he is. That's right. One of my favorite, um, what do they call them? They're not keynote presenters. Uh, when, they, when they're at our graduation, what, uh, commencement speakers. That's what I meant, commencement yeah. speakers. Yeah. We had a cardinal. This was years ago. You weren't, I don't know if you were visiting, but, um, but he was the papal secretary to uh, Paul VI, Briefly, John Paul the first, and then John Paul the second. Okay. And it was one of the the longer commencement addresses I remember hearing, but it was really, really incredible uh, just to hear him talk about uh, just the holiness of these three men. It was it was really beautiful to hear about John Paul the first because there's not much to say about him. You never really actually hear anything. Uh, anything about him. Uh, he was only the Pope for, I think, 30 days, maybe, you know, just a, just about a month before he passed 33. away. But did I just hear that he's beatified? Oh, I don't know. Did I just I, hear that he's been beatified or that he's going to be beatified? I don't Check that out. I, re, I read something just in the last couple of days about that. So look into that. I'm going to look in, come back to that next week. I'm, no, 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 no. We have the interwebs. I'm going to look into it right now. Okay. Well, then while you go, then I'm, I want this to This is talk, what people have been asking us to do. I want to talk about something else because one of the things that Bob and I were talking about was given that the Holy Father, St. John Paul, it's on a Friday, and I know I'm going to have people will ask me about this, uh, do they fast because it's on a Friday? And it's one of the things that I think is, is interesting in that I... I was going to say, obviously, but I think, honestly, a lot of people don't realize that the church still invites us to some kind of fast and abstinence on Fridays. And, and uh, you know, I will often get a text from somebody and says, you know, is today a big enough day that we don't have to fast, we don't have to feast? But I think it, it is worth noting that Friday, and everyone is going to say, well, do we fast or fast feast on this Friday because it's James, John Paul? Um, it, it's, some of that is up to yourself. There has to be some kind of a penance that is done on Friday. But the church says uh, in the canons that, that every Friday is a day of penance, is that we remind ourselves that, that Jesus died for us on, on Friday, and it's a way that we can commemorate his death and what he did for us. So every Friday is a day of penance. Now, I, or day of penance, absolutely, but sometimes abstinence. And, and I generally, 
It's a rare Friday that I eat meat on Friday. And the, it's interesting, the law says that a day of abstinence, but the local bishops in the United States have said that there should be some type of act of penance. Different countries deal with this differently. But the reality is, is most people don't even give it any thought, unfortunately. So, but what I wanted to spend one minute talking about was the whole meat on Friday. Do you know, Bob Rice, that the fish fillet sandwich at McDonald's, part of the reason that came about was because of Catholics not eating meat on Friday? Were you aware of this? No, I did not know this. Well, let me explain it to you, all right? So in Cincinnati, which is a very Catholic town in the 60s, there was a guy who owned a McDonald's and nobody was coming to eat on Fridays. And he said, we've got to do something. So he decided to make a fish sandwich. And Ray Kroc, the head of McDonald's, said, this is a horrible idea. It's going to make our place smell like fish. He didn't like the idea at all, but he said, we've got to do something with the Catholics. So Ray Kroc developed this sandwich. It was a grilled pineapple. This is true. Grilled pineapple sandwich with cheese on it. And he said, give them this. Here's what Ray Kroc actually said about the idea of a fish sandwich. I'm not going to use his exact words because they're not particularly appropriate, but he said, I don't care if the Pope himself comes to Cincinnati. He can eat hamburgers like everybody else. We are not going to stink up the restaurant with any of these blank fish sandwiches. So then he decided to do what what he called a hula burger, which was like pineapple with cheese sandwich, like a grilled cheese. Well, suffice it to say, the people loved the fish sandwich. And here we are decades later, and the fish sandwich is a staple of McDonald's. Thank you, Catholics. What about that? I like how it was called like filet o fish yes like i'm i'm assuming that's not only appealing to catholics but to irish catholics maybe <laughs> exactly. like if we put the 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 is that what it's called a fish filet o fish or what I, I was don't it know. something like that how many fillet, that, how many i thought it was at one point maybe of, maybe i'm completely in wrong in your life how many of those fish sandwiches have you eaten absolutely zero yes, i knew that was coming yep I knew that was coming. It is actually filet fish I looked on the interwebs. Also on the interwebs, now that my password works and yours doesn't, uh, John Paul I will be beatified. There is a miracle attributed to him. And that was just a few days ago. Pope Francis authorized that 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 would would happen, which is really cool. But back to the fish thing, I... um, yeah, I don't. I don't really eat fish. I like salmon a little bit. Uh-huh. We call my kids don't like fish either, but we convince them when they're younger that salmon is just pink chicken, good, good, good. which will probably not serve them well when they get older and they eat uncooked chicken and die yeah, from yeah, salmonella. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But, but that's another story. So, what I really love about uh, you know when I looked into the church's teaching on it, it was interesting, and it's on this USCCB website that you know. You hear that, well, the American church says you don't need to eat fish on Friday. Right. That's true under penalty of sin. When you read what the USCCB wrote about it, it's really interesting. They actually said, we don't want people, you don't need to eat fish on Friday because we don't think it's penitential enough. Yeah. It's too easy these days to just eat fish and enjoy it. So that's or, probably or, has to or, do with or, the fact yeah. that the filet o fish was taking over we're, the world. We're so good. Or and it was just too options, yummy. Right, all the other options. I remember a buddy of mine would always, on Fridays, he would go to like a Red Lobster or something like that and have lobster and fish. And it's like, this is not exactly <laughs> the point of this, right? There's some type of penance. I think you're missing the spirit yeah, right. of that's what right. this is supposed to be about. Um, but what I really love about fasting is I love feasting. Yeah. And I think you have a better appreciation of a feast day when, in fact, um, you have a life of fasting. And, you know, you talk about this Friday coming up. I, I always, I love it when a feast day comes on Friday. It just makes it like that much more like, woohoo. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's right. Um, and it really is up to your own heart, your own conscience. So uh, my aunt, you remember the bionic yeah, Carmelite yeah, sure, aunt that you don't course. believe in? Here she uh, goes again. Yet last Friday was what? the feast of Teresa of Avila. And I always celebrate the feast of Teresa of Avila like a high feast day. Um, I, If it's ever a saint that is, uh, I've named a kid after, uh, we treat that like a high feast day. You know, so we, it, it makes you just aware of the liturgical calendar. You know, it makes you pay attention to what's coming up and, I think it's great also as I talk with my kids about it. I'm like, hey, today's your feast day. Oh, great. You know, and um, and then just make cupcakes or cookies yeah, yeah, or do yeah. something to to celebrate that. But it's not just fasting. I think it's the fasting and the feasting, um, you know, that, that really go together. Otherwise, you kind of like lamely, um, 
you know, you know, you find like the loopholes. Okay, oh, sure. I didn't eat fish, so <clears throat> I went. I had a nice lobster dinner. Or the fasting is like, ah, well, whatever, because if I fast all the time, so. Yeah, but um, I think that's one of the things yeah. that, that I love. I, I, one one quote from uh, Fulton Sheen that I really liked about it. He said that there's two ways to live. Uh, you either fast and then you feast, or you feast and you hang over. <laughs> <laughs> and the church is always encouraging us to have that balance of fasting and feasting. Yeah, and I love the fact that the, we have a liturgical calendar, is that the church recognizes that. I mean, yeah. to, to fast and to only fast would not to be to celebrate in times that we should celebrate. And the St. Francis, there was a great story of one of the younger friars who was fasting and really having a difficult time. And and St. Francis called the brothers together and he said, you know, we need to celebrate, we need to feast. So I, I've met people that, that yeah, I, how do you judge something like this, right? But the sense is that maybe they need to have a little more feasting in their life. You know, that celebration of what God has done and the marvelous things that the Lord has done. And there are times. So when we look at the church year, there are, there are times the Easter season is a time of celebration. Uh, the East and the Lenten season is a time of fasting and penance. And that's the way Fridays are supposed to be. You know, a sense of penance and Sundays are a sense of celebration. And not that those two things are mutually exclusive. Like there's, uh, this sounds weird, but there's a type of, I don't know, celebration type of engagement in our fasting and our abstinence that's really important as well. So yeah, that, that looks to be a part of this Friday. Individuals need to decide kind of uh, where they stand with, uh, yeah, because I know some people it's like, yeah, St. Saint, Saint Hilliard. Yeah, I love love St. Hilliard, so I'm going to fast today, so, or feast <laughs> today. So, so I, I think, if, you're, I think if, your na- if your name is John Paul, you, or if you have a kid who you name John Paul. Right, so right, I think right. that's every homeschool family that's listening right, right now. Right. Uh, you are certainly allowed to fast or, on this Friday. Or, hey, you know, maybe as we close the podcast, Catholic, Father David. Or if oh. you're Catholic. <laughs> that's right. Or if you're in Dallas. That's right. That's right. Um, hey, maybe as we close the podcast, just a thought I had about fasting. Let's maybe talk about grace and not trying to earn salvation. I, I think sometimes you mentioned people who might need to feast a little bit more. You know, I think the tendency, and sometimes this is a stereotype that our Protestant brothers and sisters might have of Catholics, is that we keep thinking we earn our salvation. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we can approach fasting, I think, with the wrong mindset, which is to say, okay, I'm going to fast because I've been a sinner and, you know, God's going to love me now because I'm fasting. As opposed to, I think, what you insinuated the idea of celebrating the fact that we're not bound to the world, yeah. celebrating the fact that we're not chained to addictions or the pleasures of the world. Yeah. And and it's just a part of, you know, rejoicing in the Lord's love and whatever we can offer him is good because it's not about earning anything. Right. In it's, that sense. it's not bribing. You know, it's not I'm going to do this so that you give me what I want. In fact, sometimes my fasting is is Thanksgiving. It's, it's thanking the Lord for the blessing. So just doing something that that moves my heart and yeah, fast is, is always, it's much more about me and what the Lord is doing in my heart and what he's changing in me than it is trying to get God to do what he, what I want him to do. Yeah. Good, good insight, Bob. Yeah. And I share that because I think sometimes I fall into that and I, uh, I always recall the scripture that St. Paul says, I don't remember where, but he, it, it's just a simple line. God loves a cheerful giver. Mm-hmm. And at the times when I am fasting and I'm just really angry about it, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just think, okay, maybe I should be doing some. Maybe I should be doing something else right now. Maybe the fasting isn't what I need to do. Maybe I should have that piece of bacon and then pray a, pray a rosary. Like maybe there's something else I can do that I can do with joy yeah. and not be all hung up about. Oh, I'm doing this for the well, Lord today. And, so and again, that's and, maybe just another part of that. Ultimately, it's supposed to lead to greater charity. You know, I've been in situations where I was a guest in someone's home on mm. a Friday and they serve meat. And it's like what I'm not going to eat, what this person has just made for me. But that's not to say that I can't be attentive and aware and say, okay, right. I know this Friday is not going to work. So on Thursday, I'm going to do just this sense of, of a rhythm of life and a penance, abstinence, fasting. I just think it's a part of the, the Christian's life. So yeah, that's great. All right, Bobby, I have to run and you have to run. So let's pray for a moment. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we thank you for this time together, and we just ask your continued blessing uh, to be upon all those who have spent this time with us, that they would know your love and your peace. We pray for 
the person who's listening, who's struggling the most today, who's the most frustrated, who's the most anxious, who's the most frightened, Lord, that you just pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and bring them your peace. Let them know your love and your blessing. May Almighty God continue to fill us with his presence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Bob. Thank you, Father Dave. And thank you all for listening. Uh, We are praying for you as you celebrate the Lord's love in your life. Send us an email at hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. God bless. God bless.